Hello there and a very good uh, afternoon to you. Um, apologies for being so late today on YouTube. Um, we've had quite, a, quite an adventure this morning trying to get connected on the internet and whatnot, but I've had a, a very nice hour-long chat with a gentleman from um, my, um, my software company who's uh, managed to hopefully connect us this afternoon. So this is a bit of a test really. So um, we're also live on my website, which we haven't been able to do for a couple of weeks. I haven't announced that we're going live just in case it didn't work. So thank you for joining me, um, Dorothy, certainly, for this um, impromptu little pop-up chat. Hopefully by the time we get back to normal next week, um, things will go smoothly. So I should have been here at 11 o'clock this morning, but I wasn't. Anyway, um, I was on Facebook Live. So if you do have access to Facebook, I made a, um, a tea cosy. And it <laughs> wasn't quite funny. Hi, Kim. Um, well, it was funny. Well, it wasn't well, it was funny. I was getting everything ready to bring down to the studio. So a big pile of fabric, teapot on top, put it down, put the kettle on, teapot rolled off and smashed. I thought, great, so now I don't have a teapot to show you how to measure the teapot. Um, but um, <laughs> hi Shirley, hi Pauline, hello again. Um, so sorry, you've already heard this story already today. So it was suggested that instead of using a teapot, I used a radio, which is the only thing I kind of had to hand that was anything like the shape of a teapot. So I made a radio cosy. Um, but if you have a look back on Facebook, um, if you can get onto Facebook, then um, that was a little tutorial. So I just thought as an impromptu secondary tutorial, because this should have been live on YouTube this morning, then we would make, um, oh, hi Kim, yes, we're live now. I know, I'm all yellow for Easter and everything. Um, I'm going to make an oven mitt to match my, um, my tea cosy. Um, the fabrics are from my website and on YouTube details of that are in the details below already, I think. So who have we got? Cherry and Jeanette. So Jeanette's in Mexico. Um, ID in New York City. We're all over the place again, aren't we? Sharon's in Orlando. Um, Tarpon Springs, Florida. Is that um, Tampa Springs in Florida? Or well, I've not heard of Tarpon Springs. Um, that's Colleen. Hello and hi to Sheila as well. Happy Easter to everybody. Um, I think I'm sorted, but it's taken ages. And you know what, the, the most frustrating thing is that, um, uh, you know, so where people take over your screen and it didn't do anything different to what I do. And it's what? Anyway, Gremlins, Maria, morning, afternoon. Um, happy Easter. Marilyn, I love a challenge. I'm going to get there eventually. Hello, um, Sane in, in, um, in South Africa, Val in Cornwall. Um, dressmaking, I do, I do do, I do do dressmaking, Lynn. Um, but dressmaking normally involves patterns. Um, dressmaking for myself, I just don't have time. I, I work seven days a week um, on the Half Yard Club and on books and on this and with my website as well. It just gets me really busy. And it takes me approximately a day to make a dress. And at the moment, I don't have, have time spare. Um, but dressmaking is actually my background. My mum was a dressmaker professionally. So that's where, and that's what I trained as well. Morning, Lisa. Got here at last. Thanks for, thanks for hanging around all day. Ten past one, I know. Um, I know, Pauline. It's wonderful when it works, isn't it? Hello, Maria in Las Vegas. And Louise in Wantage. And Louise, no, not Louise. That was Louise. Deborah in Massachusetts. Hello to you. Hi, Ramali. <laughs> yeah, it left it two hours late. But we made it, we're here, hi Bri. Um, so we're on the website as well, so that's on Debbie Shaw's sewing, but again, no, nobody's expecting me there, I don't think you get any, um, any notice that I've popped up. So there's only Kim there. Hello Colleen in Nova Scotia. Happy Easter from Anna in London, happy Easter to you too. So that was the tea codes that I made on Facebook this morning, that should have been on YouTube, but hey ho. So I'm going to make up an oven mitt to match. So basically, let me show you what I did if you weren't watching. The cosy is made um, from two coordinating fabric. Again, this is a bundle that we have on the website on Debbie Shaw Sewing. Um, <laughs> Okie okay, doke, Lisa, go get your dinner. Um, 
I measured, well, I explained how to measure your teapot and everything to make this the right size, but the reason I made this curved across the bottom is so that, oh, Megan, you can get together, Megan and Romali, both 13. Um, you can, when this goes around the teapot and it stands up, the curve means that it doesn't lift itself up off the, off the top. Um, so normally, if you had a straight bottom across there, you'd be, you'd be seeing under skirts under there. Um, I know, let a radio cosy as if. I was thinking this morning, if any, anybody tuned in and, and saw me making a cosy for a radio, they'd think I've gone crackers. I've got nothing left to put a cosy on. Oh, I'll put one on the radio. <laughs> so that's that. But as you can see, I've used two different fabrics, joined those together, and then the lining is from the third. And um, I've got a little hook. And I'll just show you what's on the inside because I haven't got any left, to be honest, here to, um, to make the oven mitt with. So normally, my wadding would be this. And it's got a, um, like a silver coating to it. So this is a thermal fleece. So on the back, it's a polyester. And on the front, it's just got this silver coating which reflects the heat or the cold. So for something like a tea cosy, it'll help to keep the heat in. If you wanted to keep something cool, it'll help to keep the cool in. Hi, Colleen in Nova Scotia. Hi, Anna. Um, and it's also great for table mats and table runners and things like that. It doesn't want, you know, it's not like a thermal flask. Um, that'll keep all of the heat in, but it can help, and it can help to protect your table. But if you put a very hot pot on it, I'm not taking responsibility for having any kind of staining there. Um, so again, I've run out of that, so I'm just going to use a fusible fleece. So imagine it's the thermal one. Um, so let me just show you this one that I'm going to use. It's got knobbly bits on the back, and that's the adhesive side. And this is poly, so that's all I'm going to use. Um, so again, it's not thermal, but there again, <coughs> hi Bob. Um, a lot of us use tea towels to take things out of the oven and they're certainly not thermal either, are they? So that's what I'm going to use anyway. So hello, I'm Mia Maria, aho in Finland. Um, <laughs> a cover for Alexa. Is that so she can't hear you? Do you get fed up of her? Alexa? Sorry if that set any of them off. So any of that's that. Let's just pop you there. But it would make a nice sewing machine cover. It would make a nice food mixer cover. Right, let's see what we've got left here. Okay, so I'm going to start again with this little bit. So let me just trim down. This is what was left over from this morning. Right, let's trim this off. I'm going to make one side of it in two fabrics and one side in one fabric, so I think I've just about run out of enough. Oh no. No, we can do this, right. Basically, I'm going to make a pattern using my own hand. So that's the shape of the glove, and you draw around here like that, like that, like that. So I've got just about enough fabric to do this. Let's trim that off there. That needs to be in a straight line. That should be enough. So, oh, in fact, that's a bit too much. So that's spare. And then this fabric is going to go across the bottom. So I'm just going to make a border with this. And snip across here. And that's going to be a straight line there as well. So normally for straight lines, I would be using my rotary cutter ruler and mat, but I'm using the pattern and the actual fabric to cut that straight, so that's fine. Right, so I'm going to sew. Oh, we've got plenty there, look. Right sides together. Just across the straight piece there. Oh, Lisa's got foster cats. Oh. There we go. Oh, well, we switched off. There we go. So just in a straight line across here. 
I hope another coffee will arrive. <laughs> oh, Chris, I don't know about something strong. I'll be talking all wobbly if I had something strong. Could you imagine? Oh, this is going to make another mitt. Look, it'll be lovely. <laughs> That'd be quite funny, actually. Maybe it wouldn't be funny at all, of course. Uh, right, right sides together again here. <laughs> Lisa, we're making an oven mitt, which will match my radio cover. You could do a goldfish bowl cover, help them sleep at night. Now the nights are getting long, uh, shorter. What about a tap cover? We're getting silly now, aren't we? Just thinking of things you can cover in the kitchen. A husband cover. <laughs> Angela, we're, we're, we're kind of having a day of sewing today, aren't we? And have we got anybody else on the website? No, we, we did kind of pop up unexpectedly on the website. Right, before I go any further with that, no, we'll put the back in on now. So let's get this up on there. Like so. So knobbly side up. I can trim this down a bit actually. That is too wide. Haven't moved anywhere since half past ten this morning and I'm losing scissors already. Okay, so I'm not ready. And I'm just going to iron on here. You can see how I used lots of scraps of this as well. I don't like to. Let's iron that seam first. Don't like to waste anything. With waddings, you can always join them together. So normally, this is a Valiseline. This is H640. And it's... Um, it likes steam, but I don't actually have any in my eye, and so we'll manage without for now. So, let's do this. A house, a house dust cover would be great. <laughs> oh, oh, a well, dust cover in the. Uh, I was thinking a dust cover to cover your house. A house-shaped dust cover would be great. Oh, one of those days today. I'm going to join a little bit of the fleece here because I've got uh, a corner bit missing. So just a little bit of heat to hold that down. And again, this isn't ideal. The ideal would be for, to use something thermal, but um, as you realize, I've run out of it. But this will be fine. And that, that, that. And I've just got a little corner there I need to fill in. So I'm going to cut this out here. Pop it in there. And then iron from this side. So waste not, want not. <laughs> Oh, I, I mean, th this is really silly, but a house cover to cover your house. You could, you could have a Tudor style one week, and then you could slip that off and put on a chalet style. <laughs> you could change it into a beach hut for the summer. Could you imagine? No need to move house ever again. See, Lisa, when somebody takes me up on that idea and I'm making millions out of it, you won't be rolling your eyes at me. I'm going to sew along each side of the, um, the seam because I think it looks nice, and I did that on the cosy, so it's going to match. So just each side here. And let's do that, and I can lengthen the stitch. Because it isn't a seam, so it doesn't have to be strong. So just about a quarter of an inch or five millimetres each side of the seam there. And then here. So do you reckon I should go on Dragon's Den, Lisa, and suggest uh, a, a house cover to change the look of your house idea? Somebody will take me up. 
did I do with the other one? I know I had two of those because I've just cut them out, but I seem to have lost one. <laughs> Can anybody see where that went? Oh. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, if, uh, Gary, if you're watching at home, I've dropped a piece of fabric at the front down there and I can't reach it because I'm, I'm tied to my equipment. Can you help? So I'm just coming down here for a minute because I've dropped a piece of card as well. Honestly, top of the head, great shot. Right, so let's have a look at this. Um, so what I need to do is to draw a template <laughs> of my hand. This is actually my... Uh, my tea cosy cover from earlier but I'm going to use that as a template here so fingers closed thumb out and we're going to draw about I don't know an inch and a half away from your hand in a shape like that and that's as easy as it is so give yourself a little bit of space and then across the bottom now we're going to neaten it up a little bit so we need this to be a straight line and if you want the glove to come further down your arm, that's entirely up to you. This needs to be a right angle, so let's smarten this up a little bit here. And this here also needs to be a right angle. So I think that's looking pretty good. Don't look at me cutting this out with fabric scissors. I don't think one or two paper cuts will really hurt. Make that a little bit rounder, actually. And straight line. And across there. <laughs> and then I'll need to cut two pieces out of this, still hoping that the other half can hear me inside to pick up the bit that I've just dropped. See, Gail, Gail's up for it, the house cover. Take a lot of fabric, wouldn't it? So we'll, that need to make sure that's straight, and then we'll cut around here. And then we'll need two lining pieces. If OH isn't watching from home and can't come and help me pick something up that I've dropped, I will have to kind of switch off my mic in just a second while I nip round to the front of the um, of the counter. So do apologise about that. You just know sometimes when when you wake up in the morning and things all go really really well for five minutes and then everything goes wrong all at the same time. One of those kind of days today. But we're still here and we're still doing it. Okay, that's that. I'll need two pieces of lining fabric. And of course you can make a pair of these if you like. This is just one mitten. You don't need to see me make two. So I'm just using that as a template now because it, it won't slip like the paper would. I don't need to pin it, in other words. Oh, gin an intercom. But, you know, <laughs> mum and dad used to have one. Um, my, my father was very much into model railways. So he had all, the, all American trains. So he had uh, the whole of the loft was converted into a model railway. My mother hated it. And he also used to run a model railway at um, one of these adventure theme parks. That was, that was his thing. So he'd spend so long up there in the attic. I was going to say playing trains. He hated that. You don't, you don't play with them. You operate them. So he spent so long upstairs operating these things that um, my mum had an intercom system put in so she could buzz him when his dinner was ready. He, she, she hated it. She, she hated the, the whole um, 
model railway idea because it took him away from her and he'd literally spend all day in there or go out on events and things like that and she wouldn't see him so she hated those trains and she always threatened that um, when he died he was she was going to hire a hot air balloon and tip the whole lot over the English Channel and he kind of took her seriously on that one so before he died he'd actually made a list of every single train that he owned all of the tracks all of the equipment its value and the phone number of somebody who would buy it so at least when he'd gone she could just phone these people and make all his money back which she did <laughs> but yeah he seriously thought that she'd do that maybe not the hot air balloon but that, sh that she'd throw everything away which is the biggest worry um mobile phone would be good thing is he never answers it a grab, oh, a grab stick would be good, wouldn't it? I could just reach down there. What I'm going to do is to leave you looking at this for a second, because obviously nobody's listening down there. And um, <laughs> I'm going to switch my mic off and go and pick this thing up. So, so do bear with me. Well, that was a moment, wasn't it? Not done that before. <laughs> now, when you cut any of the piece out, remember these are uh, mirror imaged. So I'm not going to pop that on top of there like that else. I've just ended with two pieces of the same. So I've matched up the seam here and we'll cut another one of those out there. <laughs> oh, hello, patch, patch day on the, on the, on the website. Bit of a bonus, she says. Stick it around there. Yes, thanks for bearing with me this morning. Technology is wonderful when it works. So this is ever so simple, but I, I just think it's really pretty. And it's this time of year, isn't it, when it's uh, when spring. The spring's this month? Are we in spring? I don't know, I can't remember. Um, but when we think about cheering the home up brightening things up getting some new things maybe and these are so easy and, and lovely bright fabrics like this really make a difference in the kitchen you know they just brighten everything up and not very difficult to do and you don't need very much to do it either don't want to miss you bear with me a second <laughs> Yes, yes, maybe, maybe something stronger than coffee. What time is it? Oh, it's, it could be wine o'clock, couldn't it? Um, hello, Carol in Melbourne. She's got restless legs. I get restless legs about three o'clock in the morning. Um, okay, so we're going to sew these things together. So right sides together. Or should we do a little hook? Let's do a little hangy hook as well. Um, so maybe ironing board for this one. So just a little loop to hang them up with. I just thought it was a maybe a nice touch. Um, so let's cut. Hi Pamela in Ho Ho Hi Ho Hi and I'll them for a second in Ho Hi So strip of fabric. Let's just do a little loop like that. So that will be. Let's give it a measure just in case you want to make one. About four inches by two, and we'll just make that into a little ribbon. like so fold that over so long sides to the center long side to the center fold in half and press and then we'll sew down each side <laughs> Hello, good morning, Kathleen. Caught you live. I know, was it? I'm a bit late today. I'm, I'm glad you like the lives. I had, um, I had a complaint the other day. Couldn't get to see the demo because there's too much chat. But that's what being live is all about. That's the nice thing about being live is the chat. 
And to be honest, I think it's more about the chat than it is the demo. I'm just checking I've got enough thread in the bottom. So I've made a little loop. Let me trim that down a little bit. It's a bit long. And that's going to go facing inwards just on the side there. Not too close to the bottom because I need a seam allowance around the bottom. So just about an inch or two and a half centimetres or so from the side. Should we do it like that? No, we'll do it like that. And I'm just going to sew that within the seam allowance. I'm using a quarter of an inch seam allowance on this one. It's not really important, but they're about, so about six millimetres. I'm glad you like a chat, Deborah and Heather. <laughs> bit late. Um, right, right sides together. So I'm going to match the seam here and sew all the way around the edge. Country, Romali, I'm in England. Like so. Extra precise. So I've no idea what that means, but thanks for the comment, I'll translate later. So let's go all the way around, nice and careful around the curves, so if you need to stop to turn, stop the needle down. So if you're new to us on, on YouTube, by the way, I, I try and pop up on a Saturday morning at 11 o'clock. Um, so if you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell for notifications, you'll get a notification when we go live every week. And I do make something every week if I can. A small project, because I'm normally here for about an hour, and... Um, something that doesn't involve a pattern so we do some really really simple projects on the Saturday but again if you subscribe then you don't have to remember do you I think you get a ding when uh, or you get some kind of notification anyway um, where I've sewn around that bit there I'm going to just snip up to the seam that'll help the seam to sit flat and not pucker and on the inside curve here I'm not going to go all the way around and stick because it's not necessary just on those pieces there and then we'll turn this the, re the right side out Oh, Daryl, that's, that's nice. Thank you. Because um, we are being careful about who we meet, aren't we? We're not going to classes and things like that at the moment. Uh, perfect combo of chat and demo. Oh, thank you very much. So that's how we're looking. Then I'll need to make a lining. So cutting into the curve there just means get, I get a really nice seam around here. It doesn't all pucker up. And then we'll do the same with the lining. So it's just like bag making now. So I'm going to sew all the way around, but I'm going to leave a gap in the side here so that I can turn it the right side out. Always leave a gap on a straight side if you can, because it's easier to sew closed than trying to sew a curve closed. Colleen's procrastinating. Oh, Colleen, a bit of procrastination on Easter Saturday. It's a good word, that isn't it? Procrastination. Right round the curve again. Thank you, Patch. Oh, you're on both, aren't you? You're on the website and on YouTube. Okay, so coming up to a straight bit. So there's my gap. That's true, Janek. I have got over 200 videos on YouTube without the chat. So if you don't like it, you don't have to watch it. And actually, if you watch after, if it's not live, you can wind it forward anyway, can't you? Um, so this side is going to be left inside out. And because it's left kind of inside out, there's no need to snip into the curves of this because I won't be turning it through. Um, so this side of the glove is going to go over the top of this one, so the right side they're together. So th the outside glove is the right side, this one's inside out. Let's slip this inside here. 
go and meet six people outside. Is that what it is at the moment? It is hard with a big family. We, we don't have a, a, a bit. Oh, I did run out of thread down there. Fancy. Um, yeah, we, we're quite. Because we work from home, it's, it just tends to be us two most of well, all three. My son's here as well uh, most of the time. Oh, thank you, Pamela. Whoops. Right, let's just wind this up a little bit. Some thread on here. Got any questions? Ask away if you have any requests or suggestions. Lovely to hear those as well. That will do. Put that back in there. Right, I just I just ran out just before I got to the end there. Glad I noticed then and not when I finished it. Morning, Jewel. Oh, after, well, it's afternoon here. It's 25 to 2. Right, let's push one inside the other. Like so. And then I'm going to sew around the end here. So it's ever so simple. So line up the seams and literally sew all the way around. I find it easier just to sew on the inside. Um, it, this is a little bit snug if you wanted to use a free arm on your sewing machine. So this is, um, this is an easy way of doing it. Line up the seams at the side and then we'll sew 5.30 a.m. in Northern California. Are you up late or up early? That's Kathleen. all the way around. Imagine the seams. I'm not fussed about the seams being open or to one side, so they're all to one side. How does your bag need to have the wonky... How does your bag need to have the wonky street on? Oh, how big does your bag need to be to have wonky street on? It would be the same size as the cushion cupboard, I suppose, which are, I, th I think they're 18 inches square. That'd be nice. Show pictures of the bag when you've made it. So I'm going to turn the whole thing through the gap that I left in the side. It's, it is nice, isn't it, Lydia? We get more and more people here every week. I can't actually see how many we've got on YouTube at the moment. Um, I wouldn't imagine too many because we're quite impromptu. Let's see if we can see. 220. Um, but it is nice to see the same names coming up over and over again. Um, and for all these different countries as well, which I find so fascinating. It's early. <laughs> oh, I like watching the sun come up. Do you know, uh, Kathleen, when it's uh, at, at its best, I think we get light at about three o'clock in the morning and I'm quite happy to get up at that time. So I'm going to sew the opening closed now. So literally just sew over the top of the two sides like that. Thank you, Lydia. Go on, press, press the like button for me. Um, right, so let's push that in there. Like so, make sure the thumb goes up inside the thumb bit. Nice and flat in the finger bit. Nice thing about this, you can make it for any size, can't you? So if you want to make that bigger or wider or longer, then you can do. You can, it's like having a, a tailor-made oven mitt. And now the last thing to do is to just top stitch around the seam here. 11.30pm in Canberra and I missed the beginning. We're making an oven mitt, Deborah, you can see it there. Um, we're, we're a little bit late, or we, I am very late, because of technical difficulties this morning. But I did make the, I shall show you again in just a second, I made the, um, the tea cosy on Facebook Live this morning. So if you do have Facebook, then you can make a matching tea cosy. I should have been live with that at, uh, on YouTube as well, but didn't, 
quite happen today. So again, I'm just sewing around the edge. That helps to keep everything nice and neat and in place. And that is practically that. I was going to say it needs a final press, but I don't think it does. So there's my oven mitt. And again, I, I would make two, but I think it matches perfectly, well, that nearly went on the floor as well, with your tea cosy. So we've got kind of a matching set. So I'm on a weekly planner from Letty, lovely. Notifications on Facebook and YouTube. Um, well, so, sorry if I missed any of your comments, by the way, but I do go back afterwards and have a read through. Oh, thanks, Lisa. Thanks, Kim. Um, so there's Tea Cozy. There's Matching Oven Mitt. And again, normally I have two of those. Then I'm thinking Egg Cozy, Coffee Cozy, Toaster, or not, to not Toaster Cozy, I get told off for that. Um, what else can we put a cozy on? Your Food Mixer Cozy. You can make larger versions and have your um, sewing machine cosy. That I think is nice mogo for the kitchen. What would be nice as well when you've got your scraps, because you're always going to have bits and bobs left over, um, to get some plain tea towels and just put a border across the bottom of the tea towel so that matches in as well. Maybe with a hanging loop on, because tea towels don't normally come with them, so that would make a nice idea too. Magnesium water tablets in the afternoon will stop less just going, oh, OK, nice tip. Um, Good night, sleep. Always loved three. To I, I love waking. I hate getting up in the dark. I don't use an alarm clock normally. I, I generally wake up quite early in the morning. But as soon as it's light, I love getting up that early. Get more work done at three o'clock in the morning than do for the whole of the rest of the day. A window seat cushion for a bay window, which is not equal. Ooh. Make yourself a pattern from it, Susan. Um, so if you've got an old sheet or some um, some paper, even. Um, quite thin paper, press it over the top and crease it or draw a line. If you've got a sheet, drape it over the cushion with its odd shape and draw around the edge and then add half an inch for a seam allowance all the way around. That's probably going to be the best bet to make a pattern for something that's an unusual shape. Um, toast to cover, that's a nice side. I, I don't mind a toast to cover. I, I did get comments when I made one on Sewing Street that they're dangerous, but I kind of think you've, you're not daft enough to put one on a hot toaster, are you? Um, Messenger bag for a friend's laptop. That, that's a nice idea as well. Um, thanks, Sherry. The fabric's actually on the website. It's a, it's um. Oh. Foster cat sucky sucky. Maybe you should change it from sucky sucky. Oh, for goodness sake! I can't even talk now. Um, <laughs> sucking your earlobe to get woken up at half past four. Um, okay then. Um, I've rambled on enough, I think, for this one. Hopefully now things are working. I should be with you next Saturday at 11 o'clock in the morning. And we will have a go at Facebook and YouTube Live at the same time like we should be doing. Um, if you're around on Wednesday afternoon at 2 o'clock, that's UK time, I will be live hopefully on my website, which is debbieshawsewing.com. So it would be lovely to have your company there as well. I don't know what we're going to make. Um, so I'm just checking the website as well. I don't know what we're going to make on Wednesday, but we shall certainly be making something. Might make something to match this set, actually. I'm, I'm really, um, I'm really en enjoying the fabric. I think it's really che oh, cheesy. Cheery. <laughs> Thanks, Lydia. Um, yeah, so maybe we'll make something else from this fabric kitcheny on Wednesday afternoon. But thanks for your patience and thanks for being with me this afternoon. I've quite enjoyed my day of sewing so far. And um, enjoy the rest of your Easter, your bank holiday if you're having one. And otherwise, just enjoy the rest of the week and take care. I shall see you again very, very soon. Thanks for joining me. Bye bye. Mm.